Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the May 2008 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions to the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and the link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so it starts off by telling us that the LBB Limited issued 40,000 ordinary shares at $3 each, 20,000 8% preference shares at $10 each, and 150,000 12% debentures. These were all subscribed and fully paid up on March 15, 2007. And what do they want us to do first? Prepare an opening classified balance sheet for the LBB Limited as at March 15, 2007. Show your workings for cash or bank amount, seven marks. Okay, so this is going to be a very short balance sheet. There's not going to be any big structure. We only have a few things. We have one asset, cash or bank, because we just issued shares of debentures and cash came in. And on the capital side, capital and liability side, we're going to have two types of shares, ordinary shares, preference shares, and we're also going to have debentures. So we're going to head up properly, LLB Limited, Statement of Financial Position, as at 15th of March 2007. Now, we could do the asset section first, but they did say to show the workings for the cash or bank amount. So because of that, I'm going to do the capital and liabilities section first. So finance by capital and liabilities. So the first thing was the, what did they say here? It said 40,000 ordinary shares at $3 each. So 40 by 40,000, sorry, by three is 120,000, right? So 40,000 by three, 120,000. And then we had uh, 20,000 8% preference shares at $10 each. Now the 8% is the dividend rate on the preference shares. And that comes into play when we're paying dividends. We are issuing shares. So the 8% is not relevant. So please don't multiply that rate here at all. You're just multiplying 20,000 by 10%. Sorry, by $10. 20,000 by $10, sorry. <laughs> That's going to give us 200,000. So our total share capital will be 320,000. Now, the debentures are classified as non-current liabilities. And we just, it just told us, how much was it? 150,000, 12% debentures. 12% is the interest rate that we pay on the loan, debentures or loans. But we pay that interest in the income statement. Sorry, sorry, let me rephrase that. When we pay the interest, that's debit, interest, expense, and credit cash. That has nothing to do with when you issue the debentures. The value of the debentures is just $150,000, right? The 12% has no bearing on that at all. When we add now the 320 share capital and the non-current liabilities, we get total capital and liabilities of 470. And that's going to be the amount of the cash. And you're going to see the working 120 for the ordinary shares, 200,000 for the preference shares, and 150,000 for the debentures. Right? And as you can see, the total asset value is equal to the total capital plus liabilities, which of course is the basic accounting or balance sheet equation. Assets equal to capital plus liabilities. Okay, that's it for part A. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so for part B, they start off by telling us a summary of the financial statements for S. Christie Limited is presented below. So the first thing they give us is this income statement, trading and profit and loss account for the year ended 30th April 08. We have sales, open an inventory, add purchases, less closing inventory. So we have cost of goods sold, not in a separate line. Um, when you subtract that from the sales, you're gonna get your gross profit. You have your expenses and your net margin. Okay, cool. Then we have a balance sheet or statement of financial position. So we have the fixed or non-current assets as we know it. Current assets, inventory, debtors, bank, total, and then current liabilities. So in this format, they're showing net working capital. When you add it to the non-current assets, you get, well, net assets. Well, total assets, less current liabilities. In your capital section, you have the capital at start, add the net profits minus the drawings, and your balance sheet balances. Now, what they want us to do is calculate a quite a few ratios. The first one up is the gross profit margin, and that's simply the gross profit divided by sales expressed as a percentage. Before I show it, I'm gonna put a card up there to my ratios playlist. If you need to refresh yourselves or learn what ratios are for CSEC PUE, please check out that playlist and then come back here. But if you wanna stick around and see what I do here, by all means, feel free to do so because I am gonna explain how to calculate the ratios, but I'm not going to explain the meaning behind the ratios because the question didn't ask for it. Okay, so gross profit margin is the gross profit. What's the gross profit? The gross profit was 87.50, and we're going to divide that or express it as a percentage of sales of 35,000. So let's plug it up. 
So gross profit of 87.50 divided by net sales of 35,000, giving us 25% exactly as the gross profit margin. That's the percentage of sales that remains as gross profit after covering your cost of sales, right? It shows out of every sales dollar, every dollar, one dollar of sales, what percentage is left as gross profit after covering cost of sales. Now the next prompt or ratio is the net profit margin. Just like the gross profit margin, the net profit margin is the net profit expressed as a percentage of sales. So your net profit was 5,200 and your sales was the same 35,000. So when we divide net profit by sales, we're going to get approximately 14.86%. So again, that's the percentage of sales revenue left as profit after covering all expenses, your cost of sales and your operating expenses. Or again, it shows you what percentage of every $1 of sales remains as profit for the owner after covering all expenses. Another measure of profitability they want here is the return on capital invested. Now that's simply the net profit expressed as a percentage of the capital invested. The capital invested is simply the capital of the owner. Remember, the owner invests capital, puts capital into the business to start the business, okay? Now the net profit as above was 5,200. Now you can do this ratio a couple of different ways. The way I did it was I divided by capital. Now capital was given to us in the balance sheet as 5,000. So I used the opening capital of 5,000 and expressed the net profit as a percentage of that. So we got 104%. So it means that the owner is getting back not just the amount they invested, but a little more, right? So it's almost like a like an interest rate on an investment. If you went to a bank or a financial institution and you ask, okay, what, what investment products do you have that I can put my money into and earn more money, right? And they say, well, we have these. And, and you say, well, what is the return on the investment? What's the interest rate on the investment? And they might say, well, 5%, 10%, 6%, whatever the case is. That's how much interest you get on top of that. So what the return on capital invested is, is basically expressing that. The net profit is like the interest on the capital invested. So they're simply expressing it as a percentage of the capital. Now, the other way you could do it is to use average capital. Now to find average capital, we'd have to add opening capital of 5,000 to closing capital of 7,700 and then divide by two. So I'm gonna do that here I'm gonna say average of sorry 5000 and 7700 boom so we're going to get 6350 which which carries down the return on capital invested about 81.89 approximately 82 percent okay so again it depends on the information they give you but if they don't see which formula to use you are free to use either one i kind of prefer opening capital because that's what you started with the ending capital was really present during the course of the year but of course as the business goes on and operates and earns profit, it kind of invests some of the profit or the earnings back into itself. But that's a discussion for another time. Now, we move on to the liquidity ratios, the current ratios. The current ratio is simply current assets divided by current liabilities. So current assets, we had a total here of 74.50 and current liabilities is simply 275. So we're gonna divide 74.50 by 275. Now this is not expressed as a percentage. It's expressed as a ratio. So we get $27.09 to $1. This shows us how many dollars of current assets exist to pay off every $1 of current liabilities. Okay, so in this case, we have $27, a little more than $27 of current assets to pay off every $1 that we owe in current liabilities. So that seems pretty good. Now the next ratio is the asset test ratio, which is a slightly more stringent or harder test of liquidity because it takes the current assets but excludes stock and divide it by current liabilities. So our current assets excluding stock will simply be, sorry, the debtors and the bank, right? That's gonna give us 44.50 and we're dividing by the same 275 and that's gonna give us 16.18 to one. So we have, we still have, if you exclude stock, you still have $16.18 of current assets available to pay off every $1 of current liabilities. Now, why are we excluding stock? Stock is the least liquid current assets. You are never bound to sell stock. Somebody might come up with a better product and nobody might want yours. Or let's say, for example, you had a stock of tickets to an event and the event passed and you didn't sell out some of those items. Now they are worthless, right? <laughs> okay. Now, the last ratio they have us calculating here is an activity ratio. Some people classify it as a, prof a profitability ratio. It's the rate of stock turnover, which they just call the stock turnover. Uh, we need the cost of goods sold divided by the average stock. 
The cost of goods sold they gave us here was 26,250. So we're gonna plug that in first. Now the average stock is the average of the opening inventory balance and the closing inventory balance. So that's 2,500 plus 3,000, then divided by two, which I think is 2,750, right? Now this gives us 9.55 times. This tells us the number of times during the year that the entity sold out its average stock. So 9.55 times is close to 10 times a year, which is kind of good. But again, we don't know the exact context of the entity, so we can't say whether it is actually good or bad. We could only suppose. Okay, let's take a look at the last two items very quickly. Okay, so they're asking us here to explain briefly what, what each of the following indicates about a business. A good current ratio and a bad asset test ratio. One mark each. Okay, now a good current ratio indicates that a business can pay off its current liabilities using its current assets. Right? A good current ratio is usually above 1 to 1 or, or even 1 1.5 to 1. And it indicates, hey, we could pay off the current liabilities using current assets. That's what a good current ratio says. A bad asset test ratio indicates the opposite, that a business cannot pay off its current liabilities using its current assets, but excluding stock. All right? So it means that the business might be in trouble because if it had to pay off its current liabilities and it can't use the stock and it's not able to, what is it going to do? Does it have to borrow more money to pay off? Is it going to be able to borrow more money? Will it have to sell some non-current assets in order to get money to pay off current liabilities? In which case, is that going to harm your operation? Suppose you have to sell equipment or your property or other important assets you use to operate to earn revenue. Then you're going to be in a very bad position. So you never really want to have that happen. Anyhow, guys, that's about it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the May 2008 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any other videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handles. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.